After teaching you how to do a FNAF render, I now think it's time to kick it up a notch. Welcome to Lunatic Hugo's Animation Tutorial. Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in! Buckle your seats because this is gonna be quite the informative video. So let's get right into the action. If you're pretty new to Blender, I do recommend watching my first tutorial so you can get around the basics of what Blender is, because this is gonna be a little more specific. At all times, on the left corner of my screen, there will be the screencast keys, which will show you which keys and which mouse buttons I'm pressing in case you're lost. Hey. The interface. One of the first things you wanna do is set your FPS. It depends on what you want and also your computer. The higher the FPS, the more frames to render. The higher the FPS, the smoother it's gonna be. Generally, and for a lot of people, it's either 24 or 60. Apart from that, the rest you can pretty much change at any point in your animation. The most important thing really is gonna be your timeline. It's not too difficult to comprehend. What's slightly different is your scene range, which determines when your animation starts and stops. You want to adjust that depending on either the end of your movements or the end of a certain line in the song or in your audio. Talking about audio, let's see how you can add that into your blender. All you gotta do is go into the video editing tab and it's just drag and drop really. In terms of format, I personally use WAVE and you can split your audio wherever you want with the letter K. Returning to the layout workspace, you might want to adjust some settings in your playback. To have the best in-sync experience, I changed the sync to frame dropping. Scrubbing, I guess, would be pretty optional for some people. I prefer to use it because it makes me able to be very precise with what I do. Here's an example with and without. And that's pretty much it in terms of setting up your blender for your animation. B. Animation. Taking into account that you know how to append, you know how to move bones, we're gonna skip that for this tutorial. Before you try and animate anything though, you might wanna change your handle type and your interpolation. You can simply change them by going into Blender's preferences, going into animation, and into the F curves tab. I always go with Bezier, however for handle types, I either go with automatic or auto clamped. Simply because, to me, they give you the best results in terms of movements and how smooth you want them. Next, and I think that I speak for a lot of people when I say that you want to turn on auto keyframe. It makes it so that you don't have to add a keyframe to every movement you do. But let's say if you just want to add a keyframe manually to start a movement or something, you can press I with your mouse in the viewport and choose location, rotation, and scale. To animate bones, you always want to be in pose mode, which makes a lot of sense because to be fair, if you're not, it just won't let you animate. Sometimes the axis of your model, whether it's in rotation or location, even scale, might slightly be off. For example, if the fingers don't really bend the right way, you might want to switch from global to local in orientation. With all this in mind, I suggest for all the starters to just play around a bit with those keyframes, those movements. I really recommend starting simple. Just do an animatronic waving or an idle animation or a jump scare. The key is to start simple. With a few keys in your timeline, you can already change some things. For example, if you hold left click and you drag, you can select multiple keyframes at a time. Obviously, you can just delete them with delete. And if you go on a keyframe, you press S in the timeline still, and you drag, you can see that you can make your movements either faster or slower. And by right-clicking on a keyframe that is already selected, a lot of the options that I've explained before appear, and some of them are pretty self-explanatory. When you download a model, you will either see that it's in an IK rig or an FK rig. Here's the difference between the two for those that don't know. And I'm not going to show you how to make a IK rig because I want to keep this as short as possible. However, I will link in the description a very short tutorial on how to make an IK rig. What I will show you is how to switch from an IK to an FK and it's pretty simple. So you got your model that has an IK on it. 
What you want to do is go to pose mode and you will see that the hand is usually green and the elbow is usually yellow. For this, you can go hand first or elbow first, it doesn't really matter, but you want to go to bone constraint properties and you want to turn down the influence to zero on the both of them. What can happen is that the hand will not be linked to the elbow anymore. How to fix it? It's pretty simple. You want to go to edit mode, select the hand first, then the elbow, do control P and do keep offset and then it should be fixed. You should be able to move your arm, your hand uh, in an FK manner per se. If you want to quote unquote lock things into a rig, for example, make Spring Bunny hold an axe or a knife, little props like these usually don't have a rig and you do not have to rig them. All you have to do is move them to where you want them to be on the rig, select them in object mode, then select the armature, go to pose mode, select the bone holding the asset or the prop, so usually it would be the hand, and you would do control P, bone. What's slightly trickier is when you want to merge two rigs, for example, have Funtime Freddy hold bonnet as well. In very simple terms, you want the small rig to be the child of the big rig. You want to select the main bone of your small rig, for example, it would be bonnet's spine. You want to go to, once again, bone constraint properties, select child off, the target will need to be Freddy's armature, so make sure to check what the armature is called. And the bone would simply be the lower arm. And there you go. Now it is completely locked into the rig. Ah, <sighs> squash and stretch. The reason why I told you to use location, rotation and scale is that it's gonna affect the three of them. If you don't choose scale, you won't really be able to animate the squash nor the stretch. The way I do it is simply use scale. Insert a keyframe where the model is normal. If you want to do your squash, you can just shrink the model down and the opposite for stretching. I don't recommend doing it slow. It's usually for fast movements and you want to have some animation behind it. You can just have the pelvis go up and down. There needs to be logic behind the stretching. For example, if the character turns or if he's scared, that's when it's going to work out a bit more. It also depends on the speed. Usually cartoony movements work really well at faster speeds. Here's an example for you to see what I mean. C. Optimization. This part is gonna be very short yet very useful for some people. Especially the ones with slow PCs or if you wanna make your animation experience more comfortable, let's say. Simplify will hide any subdivisions of a model that are not applied, which you can check by clicking on a mesh going into modifier properties and seeing if there's any subdivisions. If there are none on the entire model, it means they're applied, which means you're screwed. If they're not, good for you. Just turn on simplify, put max subdivisions to zero, and the best thing is that when you render, simplify will be turned off automatically. It might sound dumb, but hiding objects will maybe make your blender a little smoother, which is why making collections is very useful because you can selectively hide things in your scene. Grouping these two together because they're in the same tab, the amount of undos and the autosave timer, which you can both find in edit preferences, going to system for the undo steps. You don't want to put too much, but you might want to put a bit more than 32 in case you need to massively do control Z. For autosaves, it's in save and load right below and you just have to change the timer. It's in minutes. So do not put five minutes, your PC will be flooded with autosaves and your storage will be full very quick. It happened to me and I didn't know why. So I recommend putting between 30 minutes to one hour. D. The camera. I'm not gonna spend too long on the camera either. It's pretty simple as well. The camera can be very easy to control if you use fly and navigation, which is a setting that is in edit preferences and that I've shown in the previous tutorial. This way you can freely move the camera from your point of view. And it's pretty much the same thing uh, for animation. You just want to use auto keyframe and move the camera the way you want. If you're going with more precise camera movements, you might want to manually animate some of the rotation in here. Important settings would be the focal length, which you can change right here, and the depth of field. What I recommend doing with the depth of field, if you want it to focus on a certain character, you want to add an empty and rig it to the character's head, for example. You want to place it in between the eyes so the focus is rightfully on the character 
and in the depth of field settings you want to set it to the empty itself f-stop is the amount of blur the less f-stop the more blur the more f-stop the less blur let's say if you want to animate your focal length or your f-stop and this goes for a lot of things in blender that are not rigged for example camera settings light settings by pressing i and changing the values you will be able to animate those settings I pretty much tackled lighting in my first tutorial, so we're not going to go over that. And I've already explained that you can animate the light settings, the colors, pretty much anything uh, by pressing I. So let's just skip over to rendering. <laughs> rendering. Personally, those are my settings. And what you want to look at the most are the render properties and the output properties. I go with 100 samples. Bloom is pretty easy to figure out, so I will let you play with that. Reflections really depend on how powerful your computer is and how much time you're willing to let your computer render. Motion blur I always turn on. I go with either start on frame or end on frame and the shutter either goes for me between 75 and 85. And for shadows I go with 1024 on both and I turn on high bit depth and soft shadows. And if you want to render a transparent animation which is possible in a lot of formats you want to go to film and click on transparent. Now this is where I might save you a lot of rendering time. I used to go with PNG for my renders but now I use EXR. It used to take me up to 2 hours to render just a single scene but with EXR it goes from 30 minutes to 45 minutes at most. Then you just want to create a directory where your animation will be rendered. I will tell you now it will be an image sequence. However if you want to turn it into a video it's possible and I will show you. You do want to be careful with overwrite because sometimes I've lost a lot of progress because I forgot to either change a directory and overwrite was turned on and I lost my animation. And then all that's left for you to do is go to render and render animation. When it's done, open a new blend file. Make sure the FPS is set to the same as your animation. Go to the video editing tab, go to add image sequence. Select the beginning of your image sequence, press A so that it's all selected, and then do add image strip. Arrange the frame end to when your animation stops. And all you gotta do now is change your format. Go to FFmpeg video, go to encoding, select MPEG4, the codec will be H264, perceptually lossless, and real time. And now you should get an MP4 render that pretty much looks the same as your EXR frames. F. Bonus. There are no workshops in Blender, so to find your assets, your props, or anything that you want to use, you might want to get some add-ons. The two that I'm going to show you are either free or partially free. There is Blender Kit, who is a huge library of models, textures, anything you want to look for, and there is also the Sketchfab add-on where you can find models as well. I will link two videos in the description where you can install Blender Kit and the Sketchfab add-on. The way to get FNAF models still pretty much is the same, either on DeviantArt or on Twitter. By typing FNAF Blender 2.8, you will find a lot of available models. And all of this should get you started on FNAF animations. Before the video ends, I want to remind everyone that, to me, in terms of animation, the key and the best thing is to find your own style, to branch out from everybody else. And that's what I want people to try and do the most. Find yourself and stick out of the bunch. Thank you to the Ko-Fi members this month. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys in preview 2 of Beal the Surface.